Ready. Ready? Hi, my name is Ali Kaki. I'm a medical student at UC San Diego, and I'm reading a statement by Khaled El Masri, a German citizen of Lebanese descent who was a car salesman before he was detained in December 2003. You speak up a little bit. The U.S. policy of extraordinary rendition has a human face and it is mine. I was born in Kuwait and raised in Lebanon in 1985. I fled to Germany in search of a better life and became a citizen and started my own family. I have five children. On December 31st, 2003, I took a bus from Germany to Macedonia. When we arrived, Macedonian agents confiscated my passport and detained me for 23 days. I was not allowed to contact anyone. I was forced to record a video saying I had been treated well. I was handcuffed, blindfolded, and taken to a building where I was severely beaten. My clothes were sliced from my body with a knife or scissors, and my underwear was forcibly removed. I was thrown to the floor, and my hands pulled behind me, a boot placed on my back. When my blindfold was removed, I saw men dressed in black wearing ski masks. I was put in a diaper, a belt with chains to my wrist and ankles, earmuffs, iPads, and in a blindfold and a hood. I was thrown into a plane, my legs and arms spread eagled and secured to the floor. I felt two injections and became nearly unconscious. I felt the plane take off, land, and take off. <coughs> When we landed again, I was beaten and left in a dirty and cold concrete cell with a, a bottle of putrid water. I was taken to an interrogation room where I saw men dressed in, a, in the same black clothing and ski masks as before. They stripped and photographed me. They stripped me and photographed me, and took blood and urine samples. And I was returned to the cell. The following night, my interrogations began. They asked me if I knew why I had been detained. I did not. They told me I was now in a country with no laws, and did I understand what that meant? They asked me many times whether I knew the men who were responsible for the September 11th attacks, if I had traveled to Afghanistan, and if I was associated with people, certain people in Germany. I told the truth that I had never been to Afghanistan. I had never been involved in any extremism. I asked repeatedly to meet with a representative of the German government, or a lawyer, or, or to be brought before a court. My re requests were denied. Sorry, my requests were ignored. In desperation, I began a hun hunger strike. After 27 days without food, I was taken to meet with two Americans, the prison director and another man, referred to as the boss. I pleaded with them to release me or bring me before a court. But the prison director, the prison director replied that he could not release me without permission from Washington. He also said he believed I should not be t detained in the prison. After 37 days without food, I was dragged to the interrogation room where a feeding tube was forced through my nose into my stomach. I became extremely ill. I was taken to meet an American who said he had traveled from Washington and who promised I would soon be released. I was also visited by a German-speaking man who explained that I would be allowed to return home but warned that I was never to mention what had happened because the Americans were determined to keep it secret. Almost five months after I was kidnapped, I was again blindfolded, handcuffed, and chained to an airplane seat. I was told we would land in a country other than Germany, but that I would eventually get to Germany. After we landed, I was driven to the mountains. My captors removed my handcuffs and blindfold and told me to walk down a dark, deserted path and not look back. I was afraid I would hold on, be hold on. Okay, go back to where you were reading from, like before she started. No, I'm still recording. After we landed, I was driven into the mountains. My captors removed my handcuffs and blindfolded and told me to walk down a dark, deserted path and not look back. I was afraid I would be shot in the back. I turned a bend and encountered three men who asked why I was illegally in, Al in Albania. They took me to the airport where I bought a ticket home. My wallet had been returned to me. I had long hair, a beard, and had lost 60 pounds. My wife and children had gone to Lebanon, believing I had abandoned them. We are now together again in Germany. I still do not know why this happened to me. I have been told that the American Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, confirmed in a meeting with the German Chancellor that my case was a mistake.
and that American officials later denied she said this. No one from the American government has ever contacted me or offered me any explanation or apology for the pain they caused me. Some concluding questions. Who are you? Where are you? Tell us about your... It must be answering these questions? Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. Oh, okay. Do you want to answer them? Yeah, so once again, this is Ali Ikaki. I'm, a, I'm here at the Career National Monument, Monument in Point Loma, San Diego, California. Oh, that's it.